Don't miss out on our new videos by subscribing Logic Heap and pressing the bell icon. Hello friends, welcome to Logic Heap. Today we are going to start a very interesting topic, hashing. And after today's video, following topic should be clear to you. What are those? What is hashing? What is hash function? Hash table and collision. These topics we are going to cover in today's video. In the next two or three videos, we will see how can we do its implementation in Python. So let's start. For this, you need to understand the concept, the problem statement behind it. Suppose you need to search an element. What are possible data structures you can use when your operation is going to be searched? One option is you can use an array. In array, if the data is unsorted, in that case, what is the time complexity of searching? Then you will have to do the linear search and it takes off big O of n time. Right? Now, other case could be when your data is sorted, in that case, we can use binary search. There it is going to take big O of log n. Or you can also use a BST, binary search tree. If it is balanced, in that case, the search operation can be performed in big O of log n. No data structure currently that we have studied is providing us uh, the search in constant amount of time. We are not able to do the search very fast. We want to make it even faster. Here comes hashing. Okay, let's see how we can do this. Let's consider an example for this. You have students information what all information you have you have the id or roll number okay and you have the name just this information of each student one thing you can do is you can create an array and you can put id and name in at zeroth index at first index you will put id and name of second student and so on. Right? Another possible thing that you can do is, which is hashing, what you can do, this id, it is going to be an integer. This number you can use as an index. Suppose the roll numbers are from 10,000 to 10,999. We saw this data. Now, can we use it as an index of array? So this is your array. 0, 1, 2, 3, 10,000, You created an array of this size and at 10,000, you can put the name of the student. Okay, suppose the name is John. So you are using the id as the index and the name as job. So now if somebody asks you what is the name of the student whose roll number is 10,000, you can quickly go at index 10,000. Suppose the name of array is A. Then A 10,000 is going to give you John. So you are able to do the search operation in constant amount of time. This is called big O of 1. So that way you can make the search very fast. And this technique of uniquely identifying an object from a group of objects is called hashing. Okay. When using a key, you can find its value. This is hashing. Using the ID, using the roll number, you are able to find the name in constant amount of time. This is hashing. Now, what are the pros and cons of it? Let's discuss. You can see one thing. Roll numbers are starting from 10,000 and going till 10,999. So, all this space is going to be wasted. Right? Of course, you are getting the result in big O of one time. But space also matters. This space is getting wasted. We understood now that the problem here is large space is getting wasted and we don't know. Maybe tomorrow the size of this array we need to, we may need to increase it. Currently the maximum 
ID or the roll numbers will use 10, 9, 9, 9. Tomorrow, if the number of students increases, it could go beyond 1 lakh. Okay. So, the size of the data is currently arbitrary. The, the key could be arbitrary. We need to make it fixed size. How we can do it? Here comes hash function in the picture. Hash function. So, what is hash function? We give some input and we get some output. Function, let's say it is whatever you are giving to it, x modulo 1000. Let's say this is your hash function. So, if you give it x, it is going to give you x modulo 1000. So, we give it id, student's id and it gives me the output. Let's say I give it 10,000. Okay, I give it 10,000. This function is going to give me 0 as the output. When we divide 10,000 by 1,000, we get 0 as the remainder. So, x modulo 1,000 is going to give me 0. Similarly, if I pass 10,999, it is going to give me 999. Right? So, you see, any value if I give, even if I give 1 lakh to it, Okay, it is going to give me 0. It means any value I give of the student ID, it is going to give me the output from 0 to 999. Right? So, hash function is used to make arbitrary data. You have arbitrary data here to make it fixed sized. That's why we use hash function. Because of this, less amount of memory is going to be wasted. Here, we were wasting this memory. Now, it will help us in reducing the memory wastage. Okay. One problem you must have been thinking. See, in case of 10,000, you were getting the output as 0. In case of 1 lakh also, you were getting the output as 0. So, the student having the roll number is 10,000 and the student having the roll number is 1 lakh, this data is going to collide. This is called collision. Okay. When we give different IDs and we get the same output, this is collision. Now, we need to place both the data at index 0. Right. For one key, there are two values. This is called collision. So now we will create a data structure where the indices are the output of your hash function. Okay. It is going to, when I give 10,000 to it, it is going to give me 0. So at 0, I need to place the information of the student having the roll number is 10,000. Let's say the name was job. Okay. Similarly at 999, we give 10,999. The output of it is 999. So at index 999, I'm going to place the information of the student having the roll number as 10,999. Okay. Let's say run. Cool. So this structure where the output of it becomes the keys or indexes of this table. Okay. And here we keep the values corresponding to it. This is called hash table. Now I wanted to tell you the characteristics of a good hash function. So let's first consider an example. Suppose your hash function is length of word modulo 10. So word is going to be the input and its length modulo 10 is going to be its output. So it's fine. We'll be having words and then we'll be keeping the corresponding info here. So, that's possibly a hash table may look like. But problem comes when all the keys that you are going to map are mobile numbers. Okay. All the words are mobile numbers actually. So, all are going to be 10 digits. So, 10 modulo 10. Every time, all the values will map to this 0 and 12. So, there will be a lot of collision. All want to get placed at the same place. We will see how we will handle collision. But you are getting the point that all are getting concentrated at one point. But a good hash function is not like that. 
What are the characteristics of a good uh, hash function? First, easy to calculate. Second is uniformly distributed. And third is less collision. So these are the characteristics of a good hash function. That is all I wanted to talk about in this video. In the next tutorial, we saw that at multiple points we were seeing collision. How to handle collision? There are different ways to do this. In the next 2-3 tutorials, we will talk about it. Thank you so much.